Google finally fixed Jamboard with a problem that they've been having for quite a while now. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at exactly what it is and how we can best use it to our advantage. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Mr. Cook's Corner, education for educators, this channel's all about helping teachers like you grow in your craft. If it's your first time watching, welcome aboard. Please consider subscribing if you like what you see today. Okay, Google had finally made a fix to the Google Jamboard background problem. In an earlier video that I posted, we tried to find a solution to the fact that you can't freeze the background. But now, after lots of complaining from all us Googleites out there, they finally listened and they've made the fix. So here we are with a blank, basic Google Jamboard. And before the fix, our main option was basically to go down to add an image. And from there, once we picked a background that we created, either in Canva or in Google Slides, once we chose one, from there, we would have to size it to the whole page. And then when students started using it, they would just click on a sticky and they could drag it where they wanted to go. In theory, that was okay, but the big problem was you can just grab it and move the background. This pretty much killed it for just about everybody. And, and your only real workaround was to go to Google Slides and do it that way. But now they finally added image and it works just like Google Slides. It works just like I did with an insert image. I click on background, I browse my file. Now it loads it automatically and I cannot click or move it. It's magical. I love it. It's going to change your life and actually make using Jamboards functional once again. In two previous videos that I've made about Google Jamboard, I've put links in the description to a bundle of Google Jamboard specific backgrounds that I created that you can use, it's totally free. I'm gonna drop that link again, it's down in the description below. While we're at it, shameless plug, I just started my very first online course. If you wanna master Google Sites in less than two hours, the link's down below. I'm proud of myself. Hop on it, get yourself started. It's super cheap, and there's also a discount code in the bottom. Okay, let's see how we use that Google Jamboard bundle to do some really cool things in our classroom. Okay, let's take a look at eight quick ways that you can use Google Jamboard this year with your class ready to go. The first one is a checking in board and you simply have students put their name on a sticky note. Once they've done that, they either drag it to ready or not ready. Four Corners is a great icebreaker. It also works as an opinion grabber when you're working on any type of class. You basically put a question in the middle with four different answers. You don't have to use all four. And then you give the choices. The student just puts their sticky under the number where they believe they fit. Number three, beginning of the year setup. You can have multiple slides with backgrounds like this where students will be able to put on here with sticky notes what they feel their class should look like. You can put any question in here, but this is just a basic anchor chart that is digital. This is one of my favorites, the all good getting there need help. You're working on a concept, you're working on projects, whatever it may be. You post this on the screen, students can go in, they can put stickies and they can just drag their name to wherever they currently are. We've got some beautiful looking exit tickets and this doesn't require much explanation, but a student would post the answer to whatever you pose as a way to exit the class at the end of the day. Venn diagram is another one that's self-explanatory, but it just saves you so much time to not have to draw the circles and students can put answers into categories. And the thing that you want to remember is that these can be resized. So if you've got a long list, you can shrink it, move it, copy, paste. It's all working. It's all good. This is a digital writing process anchor chart that you can post up on the screen where students put a sticky on where they are. So if Joe is working on drafting, he'd shrink it down and he'd put his name right there. And you can keep this file running. So the next day you pull this back up and you just are exactly where you left off. That's what I like about this is that it doesn't go away. You continually use this throughout the year, put it on the screen and a student just comes up to your computer and when they move, they just drag their sticky to the next part. So this is just something you could use all year long. And lastly, just a basic questions for the teacher. It's your digital parking lot. This is something else you can leave where students can pose ongoing questions and you can answer them throughout the week. Students can come up and pull this up whenever you want. Hey, you, watch more videos. You know you want to. See you next time at Mr. Cook's Corner. Bye.